Update 7 and Update 8 have brought some pretty big changes to Satisfactory, and the most notable change to factory building has to be the Blueprint Designer. Using this can greatly improve the time cost to building a factory, whether that's creating smaller decorational pieces, complete modules, or factory and logistic floors. However, if you don't put a little bit of planning into using it, I often find that I end up building 90% of the factory by hand when I could have been using those blueprints, which is hardly the efficiency that fix it requires. So today we're going to go over factory planning with blueprints in mind, and if you're interested in seeing a factory planning guide on mega factory projects, let me know and perhaps we can focus on that later. Now in my previous guide we went through the 12 tips for planning builds in Satisfactory. Now we're going to be following the same system in this video, but if you want a more in-depth guide on those tips, I do suggest that you check out that video. I'll put a link to that at the end of this video and also in the description below. So the first points to bear in mind are what's the goal of the factory. This often relates to the production of the factory, though it may be that you're wanting to build a factory that's inspired by a certain aesthetic, as you'll want to consider creating blueprints based around that aesthetic if that's your goal. However, for this guide, we'll be talking about building a motor factory. So with that in mind, we want to work out how many motors we want to produce. This also ties into the second point, planning out the production. And here I'm going to be using satisfactory tools. By entering the amount of items that I want to produce per minute, I can see how many resources and buildables that we need for the build. And this is incredibly beneficial when using blueprints as it gives us an idea of what our blueprints should look like. If we need 50 odd constructors, should we build compact blueprints or spacious ones? If we're needing 630 iron per minute, do we need a logistics floor? Having the production laid out in front of us is a huge help, which then actually brings us to the blueprints themselves. In my opinion, there are two approaches to a blueprint factory. You could build in modules that will slot together, making the factory quick to delete and replace when not needed? Or do you go down the route of creating a scaling line of constructors and assemblies that you'll place on top of a factory floor? If you're looking to make a quick open-aired factory or want to spend time working on the aesthetics with smaller blueprints or by hand, then I recommend going with building the footprint of the factory, followed by adding just scaling lines of smelters, constructors, assemblers, as they'll be easier to fit into your designs. However, if you are wanting to save yourself as much time as possible, modules may well be the best option for you, as you'll only need to worry about the inputs and the outputs of the resources, which is the connecting of the belts and also any power cables between blueprints. Now in this example, I want to build a total of 20 motors per minute. So first of all, we're going to split the blueprints into sections. We're going to have to have our smelteries and our foundry blueprints, which are going to be for the iron, the copper and the steel. Our constructor lines, which need to cover the rods, screws, pipes and wire. And we also have our assembler lines of rotors, stators and finally motors. Now, in order to make this whole system work together and assuming that we're we're going to be limited by Mark III belts, we need to know the max manifold length of smelters, constructors, foundries and assemblers to a single belt for each item's production. So using 30 ore per minute, we can run nine smelters in a line. Remember our max speed is 270 items per minute. So 30 times 9 is 270. That, that's how we've worked that out. This means that for the 15 smelters, we'll need at least two separate lines, each adding up to 7.5 smelters, or perhaps we could do a large multi-story blueprint of 15 smelters. Another option, and perhaps even better, knowing that we need 30 constructors, we could run three blueprints of five smelters, which will then be each running 150 50 iron ingots to a row of 10 constructors. Now working out what you need really comes down to how much work you want to put into the blueprint. I tend to build on one level for an easy bird's eye view of production, 
but it's important to realize that a blueprint designer without mods can only build a footprint of a 4x4 grid with space for multiple floors vertically. Hopefully I haven't muddied the water there. So we're going to break down now the sizes of each line for each of the sections. So first of all, we have three tiles of five smelters for our iron ingots. And these are then going to lead three lines of 10 constructors, each of these lines spanning two tiles of five constructors for the iron rods. We then have five tiles of five constructors for screws, five tiles of two assemblers for the rotors, one tile of four foundries for the steel and one line of six constructors for steel pipes, which actually we could, thinking about it, do one line of five constructors for steel pipes and just make sure that each constructor is overclocked up to 20%. That probably works out better because we're not having to do multiple blueprints then. We also need one tile of five smelters. One of those smelters will be overclocked to 133.33% for copper ingots. Two tiles of five constructors for wire with two overclocked to 133.33%. And then four tiles of two assemblers for the stators and two tiles of two assemblers for the motors. Now in theory we can create this as a single floor moduled blueprint factory of 23 tiles, less if we were using multiple floors, however we'll need to consider space for logistics. The most awkward lines in this whole section are actually the screw constructors as they'll be producing 1000 screws per minute but this splits actually really nicely into five lines of 200 screws which works out at five constructors to each of the two assemblers for rotors. So that worked out pretty well in the end. Wire constructors are also a pain in this build. However, we can split the constructors into two lines of five and providing that we remember to overclock one constructor on each of the blueprints to 133.33% clock speed, we should be able to divide the wire quite nicely between the eight assemblers. Now in total, we will need to build a minimum of four different blueprints though we could use more for logistics should we wish to. Now I'm going to build each of these and you can pause the video if you want to see them. We have a five smelter blueprint, a four foundry blueprint, a five constructor blueprint, and a two assembler blueprint. And we're just going to copy and paste the recipes as we choose rather than set up the blueprint with the recipes already in order. Now with these blueprints ready, we'll need to choose a location and place down the initial foundations. Also at this point, you want to consider the inputs of the resources. And again, I do go into this in much more detail in our video on factory planning, which I'll put at the end of this video. But for now, we'll assume that the resources are being brought in via conveyors at the side of our factory. And from here we'll place our blueprints, starting with the smelters and the foundries, and then working our way along the lines to our assemblers. Once we've placed all of these blueprints, we'll only need to worry about the connections between the inputs and the outputs of each tile and the power. Now with the factory ready, you can now focus on the aesthetics of this factory should you wish to. You don't need to though. And if you're finding it difficult to position your blueprints, focus on doing them one section at a time rather than the whole factory, as it's easy, especially with larger factories, to feel quite overwhelmed. So focus on the smelting, then the constructors, and do use signs to remind you of the resources running in each section and give yourself logistic floors or canals between the blueprints to give you space to send them around your factory as that can be another sticking point for anyone who's doing this. And then once you're ready, you can turn the factory on and if it works, you can consider those aesthetics. But there you are guys, I hope you found this video helpful for when planning factories with blueprints in mind. If you did, please do hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. And let me know what you'd like to see in the comments below. Should we do a planning video for a mega factory? Could be quite fun. But we're going to leave it there. Special thanks does go to all of our amazing supporters on Patreon, most notably our Solar Eclipse patrons, James Owen, Fireflesh, and Trebor, as well as our Lunas, the Calamity Bend Star, and That Dude AW, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Brain Slug. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.